Hello everybody! Today we're going to read a really cool book called In Search of the Hidden Giant by Jane Willis and Ruth Brown. And I'll tell you what the author says on the back. Jane Willis says, In Search of the Hidden Giant is based on a real giant who lies sleeping deep in a wood near where I live. He was sculpted and made from fallen trees by an artist after a terrible storm. I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find the giant in the wood. But he's hidden on most pages of this book. Can you find him there? So this is really cool. So in the artwork in this book, there are images of giants that you may or may not be able to find with your eyes. So as I'm reading each page, I will give you guys a minute to see if you can find the giant on the page. The taller that we grow, I think, the more the world begins to shrink. So come with me way back in time when bedtime stairs were hard to climb and my big sister made me look at giants in a picture book. I believed her when she said her favorite giant wasn't dead but only sleeping and that we should search for him. Did I agree? Or was I, she suspected, scared? What, me? I scowled as I prepared. I'm braver than you think you know. All right, she said. Then off we go. West to Hadley Wood, then east. We hunted our half man, half beast. A creature of enormous size, with elms for arms and oaks for thighs. His backbone beach, his hands and knees, the bent and battered boughs of trees. We crossed two planks that bridged a stream whose baked banks turned the rain to steam. Moist mossy breath, spice scented floor, strange perfume seeped from every pore. From velvet hollows, hazy hills, from musty musky mushroom gills, it rose like magic, mad and rare, and lingered in the limpish air. It put the squirrels in a trance, the butterflies froze in their dance. Small mounds seemed mountains, twice as steep, as though we stumbled in our sleep. Without a compass quite alone, it seemed the very wood had grown, as if some time warp had been crossed and we were stranded in it, lost. In this torpid state of sloth, we blundered through the undergrowth, where thickets huddled dark and dense, and nettles formed their poisonous fence. It seemed that every form of life was brandishing a stick or knife, garroting wire or rope to wind around us, or a spike to blind. We battled on, we were defiant, desperate to find the giant. Maybe we were both too late. Perhaps the giant had met his fate. Maybe we should also try flipping it around in case it's the other way. It's hard to see, hey? They're tricky to find, those giants. They take some real sharp eyes. Say, time had passed, and day by day, a piece of him was tugged away. By nesting wrens in search of straws and sticks, the busy squirrel's paws had plucked from cones and berries there. Stag beetles rummaged through his hair.
Red fox cubs aching milk teeth gnawed, his fingers and the weevils bored, until he was reduced to dust. Should we go home now? Yes, we must. It's getting dark. It's for the best to leave the mystery to rest. Yet, what was that unnerving crack? Is someone there behind my back? Stand still, I think we'd better check. Oh, something's breathing down my neck. Let's walk a little faster, please. Don't tell me it was just the breeze. We've woken him. Our noisy boots sent shutters down his giant roots. And broke his slumber, stiff and sore, he made the most almighty roar. No more eerie song was sung than his with scarlet toadstool tongue. Aren't those his shins now sprouting leaves, weeds on his arms like scarecrow's sleeves? His shrew scarred fists, his fungal nails, his ears a twitch with termites' tails. Oh, hurry, hurry, please don't push. I'm scared of every branch and bush, of every noise that's amplified and not a single place to hide. Forgive us if we turned and ran to where the story first began, where dreams were soft and kind and good, and nightmares were not made of wood. Ah, but say for pity's sake, the dreadful cry we heard him make was really just a friendly call, and he was lonely, that was all, and being more than just a tree, he yearned for human company. Is that the truth? Well, who can say? For thoughts and cowards run away. The less we see, the more I know. Our giant imaginations grow. That was such a cool book. Were you guys able to find any of the giants on these pages? I hope so, because she painted in the landscapes some really cool giants. I know a lot of our friends over at KBI right now are into a little bit of a little more spooky story, so I'm sure you guys liked this one. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Bye!